Hello YouTube, here's a, uh, another update on my uh, never-ending saga of printing Voron parts. Um, what I'm here to talk to you guys about today is uh, random failures of printing. Um, I've run into some, I'm sure, typical woes that other people have, uh, have gotten uh, with 3D prints. Um, you know, the, the, the usual stuff. Stuff stops sticking to the bed. You start getting weird output. Um, you know, the time time the time being reported on some prints doesn't match the prompt time same time as slicers. I've noticed that's been occurring. Um, and a few other little minor things. Um, first thing I want to touch on is I'm obviously still printing away uh, in my... Uh, in my uh, Ender 3 S1 Pro, um, I've added a couple more things. I've added a light diffuser for the LED, um, so it doesn't kill me so much because uh, the light can be very bright when you're looking directly at it. Also helps with, uh, the, it doesn't need to add any more heat than there's already in that chamber at this point. Um, the other thing, as you can tell, I've uh, upgraded the cooling on it um, with a 5150 fan. Uh, and that seems to be working very well. Um, got that all adjusted. So, here's where it started. On my last batch of prints, I was starting to do some of the skirt stuff. Um, this is the front panel to the little screen. And, of course, some, uh, some uh, uh, fan grills and backing. And I started noticing I was having a heck of a time keeping these things on the bed. But it's a little understandable. That's not a lot of surface area. That's smaller than usual. But if you take a real close look at, at it, you can see on the edge there, it's not even straight. So when I flip it over, I'm getting all kinds of separation and issues on the bed. Now, first I thought maybe the bed temp was too high. And maybe it was just warping it. Um, but if you look... There's gaps everywhere in between all the lines, and that really shouldn't be that way. So I'm really starting to think that there was some sort of extrusion issue of some sort. So, and I was getting it on everything in this, this particular batch of printing. I didn't get it on the batch before this. I wasn't getting this type of weirdness. Um... You know, so, I mean, look at the lines over there on the, in the left, here in the middle. Just looks like it's under-extruding to me. Uh, not heat-related, because if it was heat-related, these things would be all warped up, and they're not. And the issue wasn't, um, it, it wasn't, the issue wasn't, um, sticking to the bed, because he's all stuck. So after making a few changes, slowing some of the prints down, I ended up adding mouse ears to the thin portions on all four sides of all these, and I reprinted them. I actually may reprint some more because I've been making some more tweaks on like the surface uh, surface quality. It's fine, it's usable, but I kind of want it cleaner than that because that's what I expect. Um, so I ended up reprinting these. I got them to a satisfactory, I may reprint them again, the ones that I reprinted that I got in my box. But these ones are junk, so I'm throwing these out. Then I switched back to my black printing, uh, the primary, primary color. And I started getting weird, weird oddity stuff with that too. And that's when I'm like, I have no clue what it's doing. I haven't changed my settings. Nothing's changed. But I started getting, I mean, it looks like over extrusion or cooling. Because um, I was getting other, I mean, everything just started going all to hell. For no reason. And I had been printing parts for weeks. I mean, this was after making a bunch of adjustments, trying to get it cleaner, and you can see how it's not even, it's splitting, it wasn't even adhering. So, I started, I was just like, I have no clue what it's doing. This was another one that obviously failed, it ripped it right off the bed, and it gave itself a little wig, 
and then you know I started reprinting some of the smaller similar parts in that batch and I started noticing this and it and at first I thought well maybe there's an adhesion issue on the bed but there isn't uh, that bed was super clean um, still starts looking like under extrusion to me it wasn't too close to the bed <coughs> excuse me or too far away either because these were prints right before that and as you can see the bottom layers aren't horrible by any means so and that's glue in case you're wondering that washes off that's water based I mean could be a little better but it's not anything that I would throw out if the rest of the print came out fine instead of whatever was going on here so I'm like all right so I've been fudging around with it for like I wasted an entire day last weekend getting these prints to just kind of print and then fail and then kind of print and then like a weird shift or whatever you know and here's another issue I've been having but I've been having this issue for a long time um, the nozzle riding across infill. And I'm like, what is going on here? I mean, you can see the lines on you. And I was like, no, I've been, the bed's clean. I can't figure out what that, what to the life of me was going on. And I'm like, all right, there's got to be something else I'm not noticing. So... I decided to try to re-level the bed. Uh, I ran mesh, uh, I'm sorry, bed, uh, mesh leveling, all that stuff. Everything is fine. There's nothing that I can find that's out of order. Nothing was loose. So I'm like, all right. So I decided to check to make sure the X gantry is, X, X axis is squared with the gantry. And then I noticed that this side was high. Was it high? Um, no, it was, it was low by two and a half millimeters compared to this side. And last weekend, I picked this thing up by the gantry and the base, and I put it in the other room. And I built my friend's other little Ender 2 Pro. Well, assembled it for him and set it up and taught him what to do with it. And I brought it back and then I started having all these issues. And at that point I was like, all right, something is off from moving the printer or something. So there were a couple of things that I came across. One, I redid the flow calibration. That fixed the issues with the bed this stuff that was uh, that was occurring and also fixed the lower layers and I had got took the system halfway apart I measured the distance from the base there to the bottom of the bracket not the bottom of the Gan the extrusion. I did it from where the bracket is because that's what it's mounted to and I can't really adjust those without completely disassembling everything. I then took the upper bearing off uh, behind there where the other lead screw is. I pinned the um, the belt, the synchronization belt that they have running across with a, uh, with a with a binder clip to hold it tight on this end so it doesn't come off slung it over here and then I put I actually used one of the failed blocks as a as a same height adjustment and I put it underneath the bracket on that side of the gantry lowered it until it was snug but movable and then I did the same thing on that side but on that side I manually scrolled that half down onto it to the same situation left it in place, put everything back together up top. Then I unbolted the top side of the gantry here where the, uh, the Z axis meets the, the X and I unbolted the base just loose. And then I ran the gantry up 
and then down. And when I ran it up, I lightly tightened it, not torqued it down, just tightened it a little bit. And I came down with it, did the same thing there, lightly tightened it, and then I ran the gantry up and down on that side. And then I pulled that side out a little bit as far as this thing would allow it to do whatever it needs to do. And then I tightened it fully at the bottom, then tightened it fully at the top um, using the x-axis to keep it same distance up and down. And then remeasured it, and now it's all straight going up and down. Um, I noticed a few months back that on homing I would get this knocking sound, like a clunk on homing. And then it seemed to be getting worse by, by, by this time. And then, of course, I moved it and I noticed there were some other issues. So then I started reprinting and I got... Let's see, which one is it? I got this one. And, you know, a few little niblets there. I also changed slicers. I'm now running... I'm no longer running the Creality Slicer. I'm running the Cure of... 5.01 whatever beta and that um, cut my print times in half with almost all the same settings um, so this was what I came out with that and of course I can see some of the uh, some of the infill coming through and I don't want that because this is a facing piece um, so I had to make some adjustments um, as you can see it started getting cleaner under there but it's not a hundred percent um, but the lines are getting better and there are some little niblets here and there like this isn't the cleanest print by any means and uh, you can see here it's still I'm not sure why rubbing across infill sections um, but started getting a little bit cleaner so then I started making some more adjustments and then I got let's see which one is it so then I got this one and I got a little bit more uniform and clean a um, little bit of wispiness so I don't care about that some oddities there I'm not sure why what's going on with that it's because it seems to mirror the holes bottoms getting cleaner and but the sides are better uh, but there were some, like like I said, some oddities in it. And then on this side, I really noticed it. And I'm like, all right. So I made a few more adjustments. And now I'm down to here. Let's see if I can get it to zoom in. There we go. And now that cleaned that up. Even cleaner top surfaces. There's a little bit of stringing, but I'm not worrying about that. I'll clean that up in post-processing. Uh, that stuff I can I can take care of. Not a big whoop. There are some little niblets, but those are actually um, like for like here on this side, right there. Uh, I think it's on this corner, is it? Yeah, that's a that's seam stuff, I believe. And which side is it? Yeah, I think that's that's all just seam stuff. So that's pretty much where we're sitting. Um, let's see, is it this one? Oh yeah, this one is the one I showed you. Yeah, that's a, that's a seam. But this is the final here. Got a little bit, little tiny corner warping that's not going to affect anything. The bottom's still perfectly flat. Um, I did a, do some adjustments. I think I had, um, elephant foot reduction. I don't need it. So I would turn that off. Um, or I dropped it down from two millimeters to one millimeter. And I'm reprinting that now, and that's what's in the chamber right now. Printing is the second one because I need two of these. Um, but these are now printing in half the time uh, that the original filled ones. Were, these other ones were going for five hours, and that was in Korea. And I didn't change anything. So other than cleaning up some of the the wispy stuff, yeah, and a couple little things here or there. But a lot of these are actually I looked at the sliced file are, are the, where the seams are ending. A couple little minor things, but I am reprinting. I'm gonna see what the next one, next one should be a little better quality. But now, instead of me fiddling with the plate and screwing around with the, the extrusion and all that, I can just send the print and just let her go and I don't even have to look at it and it's staying on the bed. And then I, like I said, I cleaned up the tops because I wanted it to be a little bit cleaner, added another skin and 
uh, was it mon monotonic, whatever layer on the top to make it a little bit cleaner. And I won't know, these should be accurate. Um, I did do the, the cube test and everything, so I shouldn't have any problem with that. And I think the next pieces I have to print after the second one of this one finishes is the two B sides and then the motor holders, which sit on top of these, kind of like a crankcase, like a, like a four bolt main type setup, we'll call it. So, but that's pretty much where I'm at now. Um, I'm also getting a little bit more organized in my keeping track of what I've been printing because it was getting pretty bad. Um, trying to keep track of everything. So I downloaded the parts list, the printed parts list, and imported it into Word. And now I'm just going through and I'm printing and marking everything off as I go to make sure I have a have everything that I need so I'm not going to be behind. Uh, nothing on that page gets printed. So I thought I had more printed than I really did. I actually have quite a bit printed. I mean, my box is getting there. But then there's like whole clip, like panel clips on that I haven't done yet. There's whole other things I just haven't really quite yet done. But I'm getting there slowly. And uh, I should have these done hopefully the end of this week. I should have all of them printed out. And then I can um, focus on assembling the hot end. And unfortunately I did use my... 5150 on here which was going to be in my hot end so i got to order more for this and uh, that's pretty much where i'm at so if anybody has any idea why why the nozzle is scraping the infill i have no clue of how to stop that from from occurring it's not scraping anything else only infill and when it runs across that infill it makes that I found that that was the noise that I was hearing that clunky kind of I thought it was the rollers and it's not it's actually the infill and the nozzle making that noise and it's seen, it's been doing that since probably second week I've owned this it's always done it as far as I can tell and that was even on the original Marlin firmware so uh, if anybody has any ideas or fixes on how to reduce that I did reduce the infill flow by a few percentage like a four four six percent and it seems to have lessened it but i also don't want to weaken the parts so i am running you know i have to run the voron spec uh print modes to make sure that the parts are as they were intended so it's running i believe 40 percent infill 0.2 layer height so um but if anybody knows post in the uh comments below it'll be appreciated all right i'll talk to you guys later bye